untold stories of our ancestors call to us through the ancient sounds of our drum. If we choose to listen to our drum, we will discover the true rhythm of our past and be guided along life's journey. Hello, my friends. I am Josh from the Wyandotte Nation, and I'm joined here by Jillian from the Wyandotte of Anderdon. Our journey has brought us to the battles of the River Raisin. took place between January 18th and 23rd in 1813 along the frozen banks of the Namasabi, River of Sturgeon, which the French later called the River Raisin. The epic center of the battles unfolded in the second largest European settlement in the Michigan Territory, about 30 miles south of Detroit. The settlement was primarily French and sometimes called Frenchtown, leading to the other names these events are sometimes called the Battles of Frenchtown. In this location, two battles took place between the Americans and the Native British Alliance who sought to stop the United States' westward expansion. It is here that the Americans suffered their worst defeat in the War of 1812, but the Confederation's greatest victory in the war would be used to chart a dark path in the decades to come. Months prior to this, American General Hall surrendered Fort Detroit to the British. News of this defeat reached General William Henry Harrison, who was the current Indiana governor and future president of the United States. He gathered hundreds of Kentuckians and other United States soldiers to recover Detroit and retake the lost territory. Harrison assigned Revolutionary War veteran General James Winchester to lead his left flank to Fort Detroit. Winchester was a seasoned Revolutionary War veteran who advanced towards Detroit. When General Winchester reached the Maumee River, French residents pleaded with him to free Frenchtown from British and Native occupation. At around 3 o'clock in the afternoon, on January 18, 1813, Kentuckians and settlers positioned themselves south of the River Raisin while the British took position on the north side and the Natives on the west and east side of the village. The British and Native Confederacy opened fire on the approaching Americans, with the Americans answering back with a charge against the river. British and natives slowly retreated into the woods, resulting in a running battle to the north and lasted until nightfall. The warriors retreated to the Wyandotte village of Brownstown, and the British returned to Fort Malden across the Detroit River. On January 20th, Winchester arrived with regulars to reinforce Frenchtown. The regulars camped 300 yards east of the core settlement, away from the rest of the militia that had already set up inside the punch and fences of several houses. Winchester and his staff took a house across the river. Because of mixed messages, Winchester ignored hints and warnings of an incoming attack. Before sunrise, on January 22nd, a group of 1,300 Native warriors and British soldiers surprised the Americans. The Native forces consisted of large numbers of warriors from the Odawa, Ojibwe, Potawatomi, Miami, Shawnee, and Wyandotte Nations, and other warriors from at least 18 other tribes. The Confederation of Warriors were led by Wyandotte chiefs Kuste Etog, or Bart Carey, and commonly known today as Roundhead. Aminye Ere, which means on water he walks, and commonly known today as walk in the water, and Teyaro Tuye, 
which means it splits a log in two, and commonly known today as split log. The British mounted a frontal attack on the settlement, while native warriors flanked both sides and quickly overran U.S. soldiers outside the settlement fences. During the U.S. retreat, General Winchester was captured attempting to rally his troops. Warriors removed the general's outer clothing, painted him, and paraded him around before turning him over to Chief Roundhead. After Winchester was captured, he was forced to recommend surrendering to his men, who reluctantly agreed. Only 33 Americans escaped the battle, avoiding death or capture. The complete destruction of the United States Army at the Battles of the River Raisin still echoes through U.S. history with the U.S. rally cry, Remember the Raisin. For tribal nations, we remember the Raisin as our greatest victory in our effort to stop U.S. westward expansion in the War of 1812. Tijame. Thank you for joining us on our journey toward understanding and share the untold stories of our ancestors. To discover more, visit any of the links below.